The Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration would like to welcome you to the this open house for the Maryland 6 Charles Street Safety and Enhancement Study. This study represents an exciting opportunity for you to play an active role in shaping the future of downtown La Plata or La Plata. I've heard it pronounced both ways, but I go with La Plata. <laughs> This evening, we invite you to share your perspectives on what improvements could be made to Charles Street to create a safer, more vibrant Main Street for downtown. We'd like to extend a special thanks to Mayor Janine James and the Town of La Plata for hosting this open house tonight. I would now like to introduce our district engineer for District 5, Kimberly Tran, who would like to make some brief remarks. Thanks, Lindsay. Again, I'm Kimberly Tran. I'm the district engineer for State Highway for our District 5, which handles all state maintained roads in Charles County, along with Calvert, St. Mary's, and all of Anne Arundel County. And I'd like to thank you for sharing the evening with us tonight, um, participating in this opportunity to help restrate, to reshape Maryland 6, Charles Street. Uh, we're excited to collaborate with our partners at Charles County and at the town of La Plata to improve safety, walkability, and the overall condition of this key regional corridor. I'd like to take a moment to just thank um, some elected officials that we have in the audience tonight with us. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. I understand that council member Matthew Trollinger is here. Thank you in the back and uh, councilman James Gold Goldsmith. Thank you. So as many of you have pointed out in your online comments, Charles Street serves multiple functions. It's both a state highway that's important to the regional roadway system and it's your main street. The project we're working on together tonight aims to capture your visions on how both of these functions can be met under our current conditions. Prior to this effort, State Highway has been working with the town to make safety improvements along this stretch of Charles Street. Following studies of a few spot locations uh, for pedestrian safety improvements, we're currently completing plans for the installation of what we call RRFBs, Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, at two locations, and I'll explain how they work. Um, at Oak Lane along Charles Street, which will be particularly important for the students who are walking to and from school and crossing there, and then also at the hospital crossing that's near uh, between the parking lot and the campus of the hospital. So basically it allows a pedestrian to push the button and on the main line, they'll see the you know warning signs that flash yellow and it'll help bring more attention to the fact that a pedestrian is gonna be in the crosswalk and wanting to cross the road. Um, we're actively in design uh, of those devices and we expect that to go to construction later this year. We've also been working with the town and the developer of the new Pine Grove sub subdivision to install a new traffic signal at that intersection of Maryland 6, Charles Street at Willow Lane. The new fourth leg of that intersection is La Plata Parkway that goes up into the north into, into that subdivision. So that will be a signalized intersection and that will help them with their sidewalk connection and the crosswalks that they've installed at that intersection. Um, I have with me tonight our community relations manager for our District 5, Kelly Bullware in the back. And both of us will be around throughout the evening to answer any other questions you have for our local district projects and things in the area. Um, we're also happy to share the work of our team with you tonight. So many of you already got a chance to go through a lot of the boards and things on your way in this morning. I mean, this evening. We encourage you to share your experience and your perspectives on what your Main Street should and can be. With that, let me allow, let me introduce our project manager from project planning, Sean Boyle. Or Sean, Sean, and the main contact for this effort, Yolanda Tokijian and uh, Aditya Imandar. And at this point, uh, Yolanda is going to give you a brief orienting presentation on the effort and the activities for the rest of this evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to have you here tonight, and we really do appreciate your time. Um, and and all the work that you're going to do, we expect this evening. You have received uh, some of our materials. Um, I wanted to just walk a little bit through with you. We have this presentation going on now. If more people show up and we want to do it again, we will do it again a little bit later. 
Um, I'm going to share some of the background and overview of what we've learned so far. We've really been oriented toward understanding the needs of the corridor. Uh, tonight is really about looking at what the future could possibly be and for you to understand it, uh, talk to us about what your experiences are because you're the experts about how this place actually works and help us to come to some conclusions. Um, and so the open house will continue until about eight o'clock and we're, we're here to answer your questions and, and facilitate conversations among us. Um, so I wanna share the study focus and schedule a little bit. Um, obviously, this says it all for me. Um, Charles Street is the sweetest. Um, and that is what we were focused on. We we're really focused on the downtown. We've heard things about 488, that intersection at Radio Station Road. But for the most part, this constant, this project is meant to concentrate on how the downtown actually works and functions, both as a regional connector as well as a main street. Um, the locations that Kim mentioned where um, the signals and the, the uh, rapid flashing beacons are going on are noted here. But one of th the other things I want to mention is that this area did not grow up um, like many towns with a gridded network. It really grew up more organically so that everything really relies on Charles Street. And um, we start we see that in the way that that access happens with prop with local properties. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, this is actually a regional map that shows um, Charles Street in the sort of in the center of the world there, the, the little um, outlined in red um, with 301 and sort of what's become a, a parallel network of roads that have helped to offset um, movement in the region. But it's one of the few crossings of the railroad. And some of the problems that we understand are here and that we've seen with the traffic congestion um, it can be managed, but for the moment, there are no regional plans to create other crossings of the road. That's sort of outside of the scope of this project. We're really going to be working within um, the, the existing conditions that exist today. And so we'll help you to understand and help you will help us to understand how that's actually functioning. Um, so we start with looking at what's already been thought about um, by the town. There was a ULI study um, that talked about some of the issues related to the gridded network. All the, all the trips that um, come and go to and from and through the area have to use this road. Um, and we've also been looking at existing studies to understand uh, what the opportunities are and what's been um, um, thought about what ideas are out there that we could that we could um, move forward as a result of um, this investment. Um, where we are today is right here in the middle <laughs> with this public meeting in April May, which has turned out to be May as it is. Um, and we're really we've looked at the alternatives, developed those that you'll be seeing tonight in the um, in the yellow. And then we'll be moving toward a draft preferred alternative with some of the um, treatments that will be taken into final concept designs. This project is actually unusually, it's funded for construction. And so um, it's really sort of up to the town, SHA, and of course all of you in this room and your neighbors and, and other businesses to help to determine what it should be. So this is a really, really exciting opportunity. Um, we looked also at land use, development, destinations. What is it that uh, is drawing people to the area? And I don't need to tell you that um, the county seat, the hospital, uh, many of the businesses that are here that are along 301 are part of what contribute to the, the dynamic nature of what's happening here. We, the, the, your local resources like the library that's moving um, also um, are important for the, the community. Um, development is shown on this map. Some of the uh, information about where these, uh, these uh, destinations are located are identified here. It's important to think about those because that's oftentimes where during the peak periods, there's a lot of traffic uh, congestion trying to get to and from those places. We also look at things like what could happen in the future and zoning, of course, helps us to to identify that, what kind of rules are there for development to play, what um, types of development can be accommodated, and quite frankly, the opportunities for the private sector 
to invest in the what the public sector, the state highway, and and the town will also be investing in. That can really start to change how the the road functions, how the place functions. We look at what's happening with um, residents in terms of what incomes are here, how, where people that live without cars are actually living. It's important because there are um, numbers of people. Uh, relatively high, six to seven percent in the darker areas that are um, households that don't have a vehicle and rely on transit and walking. And we've looked at things from a more regional perspective. This shows uh, where people are living um, that actually work in La Plata, that come here every single day. Many of them are living to the north, as shown in the, the, the green there. Um, and so you can get into the details of all this. I don't want to um, spend a lot of time on these slides because they're all on the boards, but this is the types of things that we look at before we get into the transportation systems and the and the road itself. So when we look at the transportation system, we've looked at things like what the posted speeds are, what's the functional classifications of the road. 301 is shown there in red. It's got, it's got a real strong regional function. Charles uh, Street is a little bit less. And then, um, and then the local streets are are identified as well in this map, and and you can sort of see the network of, of movement. Uh, when we did the study of traffic speeds on here, generally the road is matching up with what what uh, you know in terms of the way people are traveling on the road is very consistent with what the posted speed is, and that's what. This, the road is telling people most of the time motorists follow what the road tells them to do. And so this is their 30 and 40 miles per hour along the road. The other thing we mapped was driveways. Um, the purple arrows are indicating where driveways are. There are many, many of them. And so that's another issue um, as it relates to the safety of how, how the road functions for pedestrians and also where we can expect traffic um, uh, conflict points to occur. And we mapped parking because we understand when people come downtown, there are lots of choices for parking, but they're not organized. They're all very separate. And sometimes um, that is also an issue. Uh, so we have some ideas about how to create networks um, of, of parking and to organize that a little bit better. That's outside of SHA's project, but it's probably something that was mentioned in the ULI study and something that's an opportunity to look at more closely. Uh, pedestrian conditions, we've identified uh, narrow sidewalks comes up over and over again. Excuse me, Charles County uh, has also looked at the streets that are appropriate for bicyclists, the green streets people from 8 to 80 can ride on. Charles Street itself does not uh, is not really conducive to a safe trip uh, for most cyclists. We looked at transit, lots of transit activity taking you to various parts of the area. Um, that uses Charles Street. And then finally, we look very carefully at traffic and safety. A couple of these maps, we looked at que the queuing during the highest travel times. It's sort of early for um, La Plata, between four and five in the evening. Um, and we looked at crashes, and there's a lot of information about crashes there, but generally you start to, to see there aren't a lot of fatalities, but there are injuries and property damage that, that are happening at some of these, at many of the conflict points. So they're sort of all over the place and they're clustered um, around, um, around certain of the high activity areas. So as we move into what should we do with, um, with the resources we have, next steps, uh, we've identified those, those, those issues, few railroad crossings, driveways between intersections, crossing and traffic speeds are issues, and then the constrained sidewalk and, and um, bicycle accommodation all sort of rise to the top. Um, and uh, the cross sections are fairly similar along the road. You can see the, the area closest to a 301 up in the top diagram there is more oriented toward that actually being part of the intersection there. And as we move through the main part of downtown, excuse me, um, the the section turns into something that's more like three lanes with a undetermined shoulder. Sometimes it's nine feet, and sometimes it's something else. Um, and then as you continue out of town um, through the hospital area, again, it's still a three lane section, but there's um, 
shared left turns, uh, what we call two-way left turn lanes. And again, that that side uh, space is sort of undetermined. Maybe it's a shoulder, maybe it's parking, um, it may be something else. So we have had an incredible uh, response from the community to a survey that's currently online to identify needs. Um, most of the people, over 400 people were, um, were driving. Nearly 400 people who responded were residents of La Plata. We also had quite a few um, folks from outside of La Plata itself from the county, as well as people employed in the area. So this was a, this was a good cross section of perspectives. Um, there are lots of people that walk, um, about a quarter of the people that responded are, are walking. Um, and the details of this are on one of the boards, but generally people are concerned about traffic. They want to accommodate all modes. Um, there's a concern about need for enhanced traffic control, which I think we just spoke to a little bit, um, but we think that we can go a little bit farther um, and improving safety and access management all rose to the top. And these were um, sort of unsolicited and, and what people proposed to us to do. So with this, I want to turn this over to Aditya Inamdar to talk to you about what some of the opportunities are. And he's going to talk us through this uh, map here. Yes. Stopping to accommodate all the people that are living in on the, the whole area because you know. <laughs> Yeah, so so again, it, um, that's a little bit outside the scope of the project. We're really talking about what um, State Highway can do um, to enhance that, but I think it's one of the things that we need to make sure we understand what's coming in. We have had uh, conversations with members of the development community. Um, a few of you in, in the room here, the um, EMS community, people that are using the road have employees here as well as development. So that has helped to inform some of these, uh, these conversations. All right. Thank you, Yolanda. So I'm going to walk through the rest of the presentation. A lot of the content that's in the presentation is also on the board. So I'm going to try to go through pretty quickly and then we can have further conversations at the boards. So after doing pretty exhaustive existing conditions analysis, looking at traffic, safety, all kinds of data sets, we came up with this diagram that maps kind of the synthesis of our analysis in issues and opportunities. And you know, basically what we're trying to understand is how this corridor is serving multiple purposes. You know, as Kimberly said, it's a state highway, but also a main street. It goes through different land use context types. It's, you know, somewhere it's more commercial, more kind of traditional main street type environment transitions to the hospital campus and some residential. And we're trying to understand how these different character areas can be kind of designed with gateway opportunities, with opportunities for better pedestrian crossings, opportunities to kind of create a more Main Street environment in the area. So when we started looking at options for potential solutions, we started with looking at a new document that SHA has developed called Context Driven. And this document basically lays out potential treatment options for different land use context types. And based on SHA's analysis and mapping, this area is kind of classified as traditional town center. So this again kind of gets to that context of, okay, it's a main street in a smaller town, but also a state highway. So how do we balance these different uh, kind of purposes of the roadway. How do we look at trade-offs of maintaining pedestrian safety, pedestrian and bicycle comfort while allowing for kind of some of the regional traffic to flow through? So this diagram kind of shows, you know, what are the, some of the treatments that try to balance that, you know, thinking of better crossing opportunities, uh, pedestrian uh, refuge islands, uh, RFPs that are being installed. So this is kind of the starting point where we start looking at context and some of the treatment opportunities. Then we kind of developed a larger framework, what we're calling a solutions framework uh, to address some of the issues and opportunities identified. Some of these are part of what SHA can advance as part of their project. Some of some of the other ones in here are more medium to long term that the town and the county and the private property owners would need to partner on. So just quickly to go through there are these four buckets. You know, the first thing is the street design, which is, you know, what is the kind of the typical section? What is the corridor design? Uh, as part of that, we've identified certain options for streetscape enhancements, 
Number two is intersection operations and spot improvements. You know, beyond the kind of the typical section corridor wide treatments, what can we do at certain intersections at crossing opportunities? Um, and again, this is within the Charles Street right of way. Number three and four are the ones that are more medium to longer term beyond kind of the SHA purview for this particular project. But we wanted to kind of advance these ideas so that the town can kind of continue implementing them, partnering with you know, key stakeholders to, for implementation over a period of time. And those include kind of developing a local network and corridor access management to create kind of that grid network in downtown. So not everybody who has to go to like two properties over has to go through Charles Street, but there might be a network of streets, parallel connections that allow you to kind of travel within the corridor without using Charles Street. And then there are opportunities for placemaking and wayfinding that again kind of involves partnering with private property owners to use some of the storefronts and spaces between the buildings to create plazas and streetscaping landscaping opportunities and number four is kind of the larger regional network and you know we have a lot of questions already raised about traffic we know there's a lot of development plan in this area and you know again going back to that balancing act you know there are trade-offs with what we can do on charles street and one idea that we are trying to kind of um, advance and get feedback on is this idea of creating a regional network so we can identify potential opportunities for future railroad crossings to create better east-west connections to allow for that future development and traffic to kind of use a network and not just rely on Charles Street, which can create kind of a bottleneck condition. So next few slides are those five options in bucket one, the street design. So the way these slides are organized is there's an existing cross section at top left, um, the redesign option at the bottom, and then the renderings on the right. So existing and um, the kind of the proposed redesign rendering. So option one or redesign one is kind of what we're calling bike lane. So again, we know that this is one of the only routes crossing the railroad tracks. And we heard from people who bike in the area that they do have to use Charles Street. And it's also identified as a bicycle connector in the county master plan. So, you know, we're trying to find ways to kind of accommodate bicycle facilities. So one option is to kind of re uh, repurpose existing curb to curb space, maintain, you know, existing right of way. We're not going into any private property uh, takings, but kind of maintain within the right of way, but realigned roads. So we maintain the three lane cross section, but reuse some of that extra space that we have that Yolanda mentioned to create a conventional five foot bike lane. In all the renderings, we're also showing the center turn lane transformed into a textured brick or kind of a colored textured asphalt that helps in delineating clear spaces where through traffic needs to go, where turning traffic needs to go, as well as kind of creating some of the traffic calming effect so people don't speed through that and there's a little bit of a textured effect on the ground. And again, in, in terms of emergencies, you know, emergency vehicles could use that space to go through, especially during the congested periods. Option two is on-street parking. Again, we heard some comments about parking uh, we believe, based on our analysis, that there is a lot of off-street parking, but it's kind of fragmented on private properties. So, you know, unless we create a co cohesive parking district or a shared parking strategy, public parking strategy, you know, we wanted to look at option of how can we accommodate extra on-street parking that can, again, kind of enhance some of the traditional main street characteristics. But given the space and widths, we can only accommodate it on one side. And so, it, again, in this section, we're maintaining the three lanes and a parking on one side. Again, keeping curbs where they are, keeping the right of way where it is, just kind of reusing the space curb to curb. Option three is where we move curbs. So this is what we're calling wider sidewalks. So again, we maintain the three lanes with the two-way left and turn lane, left and pockets, but then reuse that shoulder space to add about six to eight feet on both sides, uh, like four feet on both sides to widen the sidewalk and create that amenity zone. And this would allow us to create you know, space for pedestrian scale lighting, some kind of signage or banners, um, you know, benches, other types of facilities, maybe even kind of uh, smaller trees in grades. And that again, starts creating that walkable main street environment while maintaining the three lanes uh, through the corridor. Option four is a two-way separated bike lane. A lot of research and practice has shown that the option one, the typical conventional bike lane, is not very comfortable for people who are interested but are concerned biking. And you know, majority of people are interested, but they are just concerned about the facilities that they have. And riding a bike in a five foot bike lane that's just separated by paint with 30, 40 miles per hour cars is just not comfortable for a lot of people. So facilities like this, which are physically separated, 
uh, are more comfortable. So, you know, this is another option where if you want to prioritize bicycle facilities, we can use that extra space to create a two-way separated bike lane. And this would also tie into a share use path project that the town is working on kind of east of Willow Lane. And then finally, another option is a shared use path. A shared use path is basically kind of a wider sidewalk type space that is shared between pedestrians and bicyclists. So this would again move curbs on one side, most likely the north side, so we can create the shared use path to tie into the proposed shared use path beyond Willow Lane. Uh, and again, with that, we can probably get two or three feet of landscape buffer. If we get four feet, we can put smaller trees. Uh, and this really allows for that pedestrian and bicycle connection to come to downtown. This type of facility is generally more applicable in kind of more suburban areas and not really in downtown core because in downtown core, we see more pedestrian activity and it becomes difficult to share that limited space with bi-directional bicycle traffic. So we're looking at options of like, how can we kind of mix and match some of these Well, and then as I said, you know, we are thinking about this corridor in two broad context zones. Um, you know, one which we call Main Street, kind of Baltimore Street, one to Oak Avenue, and then Oak Avenue to Willow Lane as kind of a residential slash, you know, hospital campus segment. We can think about a different cross section for the Main Street environment and a different cross section for the campus residential segment. and design specific intersections for transitions at Oak Avenue. Here is kind of we're going to the second bucket of the solutions framework. We're looking at, you know, what are the intersection operations and spot treatment options beyond what the typical section looks like? So we're looking at options like pedestrian refuge islands, uh, you know, landscape medians we were looking at. Maybe they become kind of brick medians. Um, we talked about RRFBs, then high visibility crosswalks, kind of, you know, ladder style markings to uh, give more enhanced visibility for crosswalk markings. We're also looking at roundabouts and roundabouts, you know, a lot of people either love it or hate it, but, you know, they do have documented safety benefits. In fact, you know, uh, FHWA, USDOT considers roundabout as one of the proven safety countermeasures. They do reduce uh, crashes by 70 to 80 percent when compared to kind of a typical two way stop control, which are a lot of these minor streets coming to Charles Street. So think about like, you know, streets that like have to stop on the side street, but not on Charles Street, especially in those areas. Roundabouts really help to provide that gap to allow the side street traffic to merge. It also allows opportunities for U-turn and provides opportunities for traffic calming as well as, you know, gateway opportunities with landscape and hardscape improvements. So this map is showing some of the spot treatments that we are recommending. Um, you know, again, we can go into more details, but the gist of it is like you are looking at, you know, what can we do at 301 intersection? You know, there's a large slip lane, almost like a highway ramp that you have to cross across. Um, we're looking at, you know, potentially kind of redesigning that to close that slip lane while maintaining the right turn lane. So that allows for kind of narrowing the crosswalk lens. That's a potential option. Uh, again, these are high level ideas. You know, these are not like specific proposals at this stage. Uh, ideas about how can we limit some of the left turns coming out of each driveway and use some of the existing street network so people can kind of have to make a right. And that again allows in reducing the number of conflict points at these driveways. So you're basically turning right and right out. And again, providing roundabouts or gaps at signals to create those U-turn opportunities would also help in circulation. And then we talked about the RFPs um, and some of the potential crossing locations to enhance to high visibility crosswalks. We talked a little bit about roundabouts and, you know, we've kind of started sketching out, you know, what roundabouts could look like along this corridor. And one idea is this kind of a revised version of a roundabout, what we call a dog bone. You know, these are kind of two mini roundabouts that are connected uh, near Kent and Maple Avenue. And this, again, provides an opportunity for a gateway treatment as well as kind of slowing down traffic, helping with better pedestrian crossings because with the splitter islands, it produces a space for potential pedestrian refuge island. 
And you'll see like a lot of these areas within the corridor, we're coloring them red to indicate that these would be those textured brick, you know, a little bit six to five inches raised um, so that, you know, an emergency uh, ambulance or fire trucks can kind of drive over it. Similarly, you know, we talked about traffic signal at Willow Lane, but we wanted to sketch out a potential alternative if, you know, and, and get feedback from the community about a roundabout at Willow Lane, which would kind of punctuate this space as the main gateway into downtown, help with, again, some of the streetscape elements as well. And again, this might be kind of a long-term idea, midterm idea, uh, but we wanted to kind of put an idea out there to get feedback on an option to a signal. And then, Going to the third bucket where we're talking about a local network, and this is where, you know, this kind of goes beyond the SHA scope, so to say, and something that the town will have to work with uh, property owners as redevelopment occurs or with partnerships to create this network. A lot of these uh, lines on the map are existing streets. Some of them are existing alleys or drive aisles that could be formalized as alleys. Uh, but the idea is to create a network so that if one wants to go from one block to the next block, they don't have to go out on Charles Street and come back, adding more traffic on Charles Street, adding those turning volumes and conflict points, but a potential for a parallel network. And this also allows in limiting some of the driveways. So, you know, a lot of the driveway access can happen through these side and back alleys and can create a continuous pedestrian realm uh, on Charles Street. The other opportunities here are to look at potential options for additional railroad crossings near downtown area. And again, it's these are high level ideas. We know it's very difficult to kind of get a railroad crossing. You know, uh, Pine Grove developers trying to get it across Heritage Green Parkway. But again, we wanted to put this as a longer term idea to explore the possibilities to create this network because really the solutions to a lot of the future traffic and the bottleneck issues with Maryland 6 are creating this kind of gridded network with better east-west connections. We also identified certain pedestrian and bicycle connections. You know, those could be ramps or stairs. Some of that already exists given the topography changes. But these kind of connections allow for people to create much shorter trips between destinations. So if you want to go from a bakery to a coffee shop to a library, you know, you may not have an option today, but if these connections happen, it would be a much shorter trip that may be more feasible on as a, as a walking trip or a biking trip. Again, helping to reduce the load of traffic on Charles Street, but also creating this kind of better connections in downtown area. And finally, uh, you know, the streetscape uh, opportunities. And again, some of these are on a board that highlight locations where we can repurpose some of the space in, in front of storefronts, between buildings, to create plazas, to create kind of better opportunities for people to gather, uh, potential for trees uh, and other landscape elements to again create that kind of thriving Main Street environment. And finally, the regional network. You know, this diagram again shows the overall site plan for Pine Grove. They're connect. They're creating that La Plata Parkway. That's kind of their street, north-south street, and going to eventually connect to Rosewick Road. And they're trying to explore connection across uh, CSX at Heritage Green Parkway. And again, there might be other potential opportunities to create further east-west connections uh, as opportunities arise to create a more regional network. So as development happens in this area, we have more of a network for traffic to filter and use some of these regional roadways rather than everybody trying to use Charles Street because it, it, frankly, it won't like be able to handle all of that traffic. So we need network uh, to kind of handle the development in the future. Yolanda? Okay. I guess I'll get this side. Um, so as I say, uh, we've spent a lot of time talking at you, and we want you to talk to us now. Um, we have several ways for you to do that. Obviously, everybody that's wearing a name tag um, has some knowledge and can get make sure that you're speaking to someone that you want to talk to about certain things. Um, the most there are two sets of boards with the um, opportunities that Aditya just talked about. One is in that room along the back wall, and the other is in this room, as well as some of the very beautiful um, ideas that our um, team members, landscape architects at Mahan Reichel, have talked about for plaza space and those sorts of things. Um, folks should have received one of these. This is a handout you can take home, take to your neighbors. Um, we also um, would invite you either to write on it this evening and leave it um, at the comment box 
or to um, take a look at this uh, um, QR code with your phone and your camera and go to the website and the survey that was online will have some of the same questions, but it's also going to shift over to these new questions about preference. We very much want to hear from you both verbally, obviously, but it helps to also have your comments in writing because we're trying to move very quickly um, with some of this. You've also been giving a few, given a few dots, which hopefully will be a bit like a game. Um, the larger dots are for choosing um, what um, your preferences are, your highest preferences are among the alternative cross sections, typical sections for the road, and then the smaller dots and um, individual sticky notes can be used to help um, animate the boards and tell us um, what you like so that your neighbors can also see what um, what's important to folks here. So I don't want to keep us very much longer. It's been long enough. We've been talking at you. Are there any quick questions before we move back to our conversations at the boards? Please. Yeah, so Aditya alluded to it in um, the previous slide. Um, Getting across the CSX tracks at grade um, is an onerous process um, at best um, and an expensive process at worst. And there is there are conversations happening um, with, uh, with the development community. A larger project that is outside the scope of this project would really be needed to do something more substantial. Um, the town of La Plata and the county would need to get that into the regional plan, make it something that goes to the Department of Transportation as a priority for Charles County, ultimately. Um, it's difficult to solve that problem with... Yeah. 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 It's a very, yeah, it's definitely an issue. I mean, and, and we looked at the growth numbers and, you know, again, it's, it, it's a different, it, it takes a different set of steps than the ones that this short term project for safety, well, this is really a safety community enhancement project rather than that larger project, but it's, um, Brent is here somewhere. Um, and is anybody from Charles County here? Does anybody want to speak to this question? No, but it's on the radar. Okay. <laughs> yes. They're not classical. They're a little bit earlier than classical. They're four to five in the evening, and I believe in the morning is seven to eight. It's a little. They're both a little earlier than yes. Yeah, actually, <laughs> thank you. And we also observed that. And one of the issues that probably I didn't emphasize, getting out of the side streets in and out is really dangerous. I, I, uh, yeah, we we hear that, and it's part of the reason why we're proposing roundabouts because to put a signal that sometimes signals are pretty inefficient. Roundabouts tend to be more efficient because the traffic is slow and it's you know acknowledging that that somebody's been sitting there for a while or, or what have you, um, and so it wouldn't cause the types of stopping. Also, having it at the tracks where people are slowing anyway, especially the school buses, every truck. Um, that you know slows down there and it tends to queue back. We we definitely observe that and that's part of the reason for the roundabouts as proposals. Is that helpful? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we've 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 analyzed it, and it shows up on board twenty two over there, um, and it we believe that it has um, a, a lot of potential. Um, so yeah, please 
let us know that if in, formally. Thank you. Yes, sir. So um, this job is fully funded for construction in July. I believe July 6th of 2027 is when we're going to advertise it for construction. So, I mean, you can tell we have a lot of work to do. We've got to design a project first and then um, we'll advertise it for construction, but it's on our construction ad schedule. So three, four years. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just a sec. One. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, the people have, do we have any cyclists in the room? So we go around it, Route 6 is the death trap. Yeah, so, so when we look, when we look at so man, when we look at bicycling, we we try to identify latent demand because it's not safe, as the gentleman points out. You know, you really put your life in your hands. So yeah, it's not the, the numbers that we're you know it's. We're not Copenhagen, you know, we're, we don't anticipate that the numbers are going to go off the charts, but usually we do find that a safe corridor does invite more cycling and people will use it. And um, yeah, it becomes a transportation option, and particularly for younger people. Do you want to yeah, speak to that? I can, I can just add, like, I think I mentioned it, but, you know, biking is, is tricky because, you know, some people feel comfortable biking next to a tractor, semi tractor trailer, and they're fine. Some people don't like even the five foot bike lanes. So there have been cases where five foot bike lanes have been installed, but not a lot of people have bike because they still don't feel comfortable. So then the question is like, can we do like the separated bike lanes, which would actually induce more people to bike, or is it better to slow down traffic and have a parallel route for bicycles? Or so it's it's not a kind of an easy yes or no answer, right? The what kind of riders do you want to target for bicycles? Are you thinking right? school kids or seniors who want to bike, you know, they may not even feel comfortable in that five foot bike lane. So it's, it's, it's a little trickier than that. I'll also say the number of driveways through downtown is one of the reasons why one of the things we're, we're looking at is this a combination of perhaps a couple of the alternatives that might extend the path that's being built into town. And once you're there, um, you know, you've, you've gotten halfway there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No. Yeah, so so Talbot Street is going to, it's the new access to the library. Plan is to extend to Washington where the new library is going to be. And this drawing is showing, can it extend in the future sometime? Maybe, maybe not. That'll help with that East-West connection. So there was one of the ideas. Yeah, yeah these are, again, these are all just ideas. <laughs> Uh, another another great question. Uh, no, it's just it's just that the railroads have a special status in the world, of, you know, in the U.S. and it's very difficult to transform them. But there are communities that do, and so it's certainly a possibility. But at the moment, we understand that it's it's a great idea. There you go. Yes, sir. that conceivably would add another way to get into the micro community is just a concept. It's not required by the town as a condition of the development. Okay. You mean the one that's crossing the tracks? Or the one that goes to Roseway? The one, no, I mean, the, the one that uh, would conceivably connect the Pine Grove neighborhood with Washington Boulevard 
uh, right. Brewery Lane, which is adjacent to an adult um, care center that is currently under construction. Okay, so the way I understand the way things are now is originally when there was a different developer trying to build it, they had some sort of a understanding with CSX to connect with when it was called Heritage Green, Heritage Green Parkway. And that's where the parkway is kind of built to the tracks on the other side from 301 with the median and everything. And then some things happen. CSX now doesn't have, like, is not willing to give a permit for that crossing. So the developer is working with them. Given that it's a CSX right of way, I don't know if the town could require it. Like, I don't, I'm not 100% sure how that works, but it's a CSX railroad crossing. That's like the challenge that. This, well, Brent is back there. Brent, do you want to speak to the question? Yeah. Okay. We're working. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's a continuing process that uh, we see it as sort of our top agency plan in this hearing. Yeah, so. so it's something that you uh, will continue to work with. Thank you. Yes, sir. I read something about the Metro coming down the White Plain. <laughs> They're not in any plan that I'm familiar with, but um, no, that's it. Not that I know of. Um, okay, I want to, one more question and then we're gonna answer your questions at the boards. Okay, yes, ma'am. is lucky to be alive. Mm -hmm. You will open that wide open and we're going to have more cars, more trucks than we ever thought about it on St. Charles Parkway. Both sides of the road, there are thousands of condos going up there. You can't build a house without five acres, but they can put in condos anywhere from three to five and who's going to move in families and how many cars they're going to have that's at least two if you have a husband and a wife and if you got children when they grow up then you're going to have three or four more cars we're going to drown in the cars and nobody's doing anything about it every time we turn around we look at our, our forest and they're gone so, thank you. I thank you very much. You all are part of a group that you don't have anything to do with the way we have to get around. And our, our country, our county, it's horrible. What you all are doing to our county is terrible, terrible. There's no more. You can't. Where's the wildlife? Where is our wildlife? Thousands of condos of those buildings are going on in that belt chain. It's terrible what they're doing. They break the, the soil, they stripped off everything that is growing there, and there's nothing there but clay. And it's a spin, and that is not going to improve it. That is going to make it worse. I live on Hickory Lane and I can't get out because traffic is coming through, coming up from 301, coming through from Waldorf. So, up to down. so I so I hear you, and we have heard there are a lot of concerns about growth, and it's it's certainly a conversation that's worth having. 
it's unfortunately we're we're working within the confines of improving downtown with with the choices that we have. And at, as I say, some of the regional questions, some of the questions about growth and development are really unfortunately not part of this process. But we are happy to speak to that. We're, uh, I'm sorry, this is State Highway Administration. We try to stay away from land use as much as possible, but we do need to serve it. So <laughs> may I? Yes, sir. I, I know that it, there's a long-term plan. I don't know if it's going to use the, 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 the through here. Yes, yes. Yeah, the Southern Maryland Transit Project. So, so can we? It yes. So we promised you all that you would have a chance to really be able to spend some time with this information, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, and please let us know if there's any anything that we want to follow up with. Thank you. Yes. Uh, as soon 